World rankings for October the 4th, 2021. Rugby Championship is done and dusted. The All Blacks are the champions. However, they dropped their last game against the Springboks. The Aussies, on the other hand, went on a four-match winning run. We've also seen Canada taking on Chile and uh, the U.S. taking on Uruguay in World Cup qualifiers. So how has this left all the Rugby World rankings? What are some of the upcoming games we should expect to see? And how have these rankings changed since prior to the start of the Rugby Championship? We'll go through these uh, quickly in this look at the Rugby World rankings. So you can see I've put the Springboks number 91.13 in green because their victory over the All Blacks saw them reclaim the number one spot. They're up from 90.27 uh last week so they they reclaimed that spot after just one week so the all blacks reign at the top was a pretty brief one uh they are down to 90.97 from 91.83 the week before so yeah like i said it's uh i don't know like you look at the the rugby world rankings in the past the all blacks have had the number one spot for years at a time so to just have it for one week is uh certainly not the norm in recent times anyway um aussie they are in green as well 86.99 they haven't gone up any spots but they did take some points off argentina in their final um, rugby championship match 86.9 is up from 86.16 so the gap between those two teams is increasing so the amount of points the aussies can take off the argentinians uh kind of gets less but they are kind of sitting pretty and um it kind of makes things interesting in terms of their tour uh north Will they kind of be able to justify that third place? Because they seem to be in a pretty good place right now. Uh, like I mentioned, with four wins on the bounce. England, Ireland, and uh, France are 85, 84, 83 point blah -de blah respectively. And then Scotland, I've put them up. They were actually up a fortnight ago uh, when the Wallabies beat the Argentinians the first time. But I didn't do a video on it that week. So, um, yeah, Scotland moved up from 8th without having to do anything into 7th. Mainly because Argentina dropped below them. They are now down to 80.69. Down from 81.52 a week ago. Wales, Japan, Fiji, Georgia, Samoa, Italy, and uh, Tonga. No changes. The U.S., picked up a narrow victory over uruguay so they are up to 67.81 um uruguay is still below them in uh in 17th spot they're not far behind in the rankings um canada did take point of a point off chile and their very narrow victory but um yeah not a heck of a lot going on in terms of the changing of the places now the number one question we often get asked in a situation like this is how the heck can these guys be number one when they just lost the tournament? And it's simply that the world rankings are not just looking at your last result or your last two results or your last five results. They're looking at ages, way longer than that. So how many matches have the Springboks lost? I mean, in recent times, matches that were were rugby ranking matches, like not including the British and Irish Lions Tour. Those matches didn't count for world rankings. They beat Georgia. Uh, they beat Argentina twice. They went one and one with New Zealand and lost two to Australia. Prior to that, it's a Rugby World Cup where the points are doubled. They went, run, won all their games but one. Uh, prior to that, their record is also pretty good. So you got to look at it longer term. It's not just kind of your last three or four games. Um, the All Blacks are maybe slightly paying the price for a lackluster 2020, right? Remember, it wasn't that long ago. The All Blacks won the Tri-Nations with a 50% record. Two wins, right? Two losses. So... Yeah, it's, it's the same reason Wales are in ninth rather than like third. Even though they're the Six Nations champions, they're still paying the price for their loss to Argentina um, in the, the recent uh, internationals before the Tri-Nation uh, Rugby Championship, and they're still paying the price for a bad 2020. So your old results are definitely factored in as much as your recent ones. Now, that being said, prior to the tournament, South Africa were on 94.20. They're now on 91.13, so they have kind of been punished they've lost points and their, their lead has narrowed the all blacks were on 89.10 they're on, now on 91.83 uh no sorry 90.97 um so yeah the, the the gap is is narrowed the all blacks have gone up the Springboks have gone down australia have gone up uh the pumas have gone down like australia came in and um in what sixth and they were 83.32 so they've actually managed to go up some places uh because of their decent run in this tournament so that's kind of how it works 
Um, yeah, you can't just look at one season or five games. Like the Six Nations five games is not enough to send you skyrocketing up the table. Um, and just like a few losses is not enough to kind of drop you like a stone. Unless you're like these teams where there's only kind of a point in it, right? Scotland could jump spots. Um, England could drop spots if they lost matches because you can go up or down one or two points uh, in a game depending on how far away the teams are kind of ranked. But um, yeah, so we don't have any more Tri-Nations. I keep saying Tri-Nations. Rugby Championship matches for this year. That tournament's done. We do have some matches coming up at the end of October. The US is taking on the All Blacks. So the All Blacks won't get anything for a win there. If they had a shock loss, they would drop a couple of points. You can guarantee that. Um, Australia is going to take on Canada, not Canada, Japan, so that should be a good one. Canada is playing Chile in their second match of their Rugby World Cup qualifying game. They are ahead by a point on aggregate after one game. They now have to go away to Chile, so it's going to be a tough one for Canada for sure. And uh, the US are ahead on by three points uh, over Uruguay in their game, but um, likewise the US have to go away for the second leg. So it could be pretty interesting times. We're not too far away from having November internationals as well, folks, which will be a really more interesting one uh, for the world rankings because you'll see so many more teams in action. Like the Six Nations, when those kind of teams are going up and down, the rugby championship teams are static and vice versa. Uh, when the rugby championship's on, the Six Nations teams are static like now. Um, but the teams still kind of shift if other teams drop or um, go above them. So, um, yeah. You guys let me know your thoughts. How do you reckon we're going to end the year? Do you think the All Blacks can somehow reclaim uh, number one spot? They'll be relying on uh, another team to do them a favor by beating the Springboks. Or do you think the Springboks could go on a pretty good run in November? Do you think the Wallabies can hold on to number three? Because they've got a good test coming up uh, against several countries. So, um, yeah. You guys let me know your thoughts. And um, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.